Welcome to Word Connect with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. For more information and free downloads, please visit www.thepastormax.ng. I don't expect things to happen to me. If you live your life at the mercy of events, you're going to be dead, broke, sick. My brother, life is tough. What will be, will be, will be. You will be sleeping outside. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a straightforward teacher. There is no, this is not Greek and English. You will die if you live your life at the mercy of other people's goodwill. A good church brother will scam you of all your money. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? This is not... We live in a dark world. Somebody will come everything you've invested your life for. They will sweep it away and no conscience. You can't live your life at the mercy of I, I, I'm just a simple person. No, you can be simple in approach but be a lion on the inside. You, you cause things to align. Glory to God. So the first lesson is we speak to the mountain. We don't talk to God about it. We don't complain about it. Speak to it. Speak to your rent. Speak to your bank account. Call the money to come in. Speak to your church. Speak to your children. Speak to the nation. Every time I fly a lot. Every time I fly, I get on the plane. I hold the plane. I say, in the name of Jesus, we have a clear weather. The pilot knows what to do. And the wisdom of God is available. I don't wait until the plane starts shaking before I pray. I say my own. And that's me. Every plane I get in, in the name of Jesus, we have a clear weather. And I can't, I've flown a lot in my life. I can't remember when we're in very adverse weather. I mean, a few bumps here and there. Why? I take care of the weather before I get there. Because I don't want to be caught in the midst of the storm. You will forget what to say. Just say, I'm dying, I'm dying. I go say, hey, no, no, don't keep quiet. Don't say that. It's gone. So, <laughs> so I say, I don't wait. I don't wait for the pilot to be confused if I speak wisdom to his life. Do you know the funny thing? I was telling my brother, and it was, it was a joke. Not a joke. I'm serious. But, Pastor Zach, it's amazing that I've flown so much that I discovered that I had to now start putting faith in my heart to use road. Like the last time we traveled local Jalai, I was not scared of the car. Like, this speed is too much. Like, I'm not like, uh-uh. look at this village boy. I used to be scared of planes. But you know what? I put word in my heart. I put word in my heart. Right now, I sit in planes and I'm calm. I'm just sleeping. I'm enjoying it. And I get into cars. And I'm like, this speed is too much. This speed is too much. And I now discover that I have to now stay put words in my heart to be able to use the car. You know what I discovered? If you keep putting faith on one area of your life, you'll be developed. And if you don't put faith in another area of your life, you will not be developed in that area. That's why you can have healthy Christians who are poor. Very healthy. They never go to the hospital, but they can't pay rent. You know why? Faith is developed in the area of health. But then, no, there's no faith developed in the area of what? Finances. Even in terms of favor, faith has to be developed. All areas, exactly, all areas of life. So this thing has to be mathematical. You carry your notes, you list out all the areas and say, Where am I weak? It is deliberate. It is not just make it up. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you as I go, you will keep me. My going out and my coming in, you are joking. This thing is science. So I'm not I'm not the kind of favor I'm receiving, I'm not no no no, it's not this is not the level I should be in. You get favor scriptures, you start expecting favor. Number one, I say this everywhere I go, I don't expect people not to like me. If you don't like me, there's usually something wrong with you. No, I don't expect, I don't expect bad treatment. No, people just naturally like me because the favor of God is on my life. If I see someone struggling to like me, I have compassion on you. Because it's not normal. The normal default is that people like, when you guys carried me from the airport, didn't you like me? If you say no, I will break your head. How do you not like me? But people just like me. People just want to help me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People just like me. Why? Because with favor, he surrounds me as a shield. 
Even when I travel, oh, green passport, they like my green passport. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I don't know why people don't like me in this compound. Uh-uh. Like why? Why we don't like you? But you know you've developed faith that people don't like you. And you have what you say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Number two. You will have what you say. It's God's eternal Lord. How did I come up to this pulpit? Pastor said, let us welcome Pastor Maxwell. If he didn't say that, I would never stand up. How are we going to make sure you guys go home when we close service? I would say, we have closed. I don't know if you understand. Everything in this life, don't just look at it from the perspective of what the word of God says. Look at it from natural life. Whatever you have is what you say. Let me give you an example. I walk into a shopping mall and I want to buy this red um, face towel. Right. And I walk in and I just walk past it. I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking I want to buy it. And I just walk past it. I'm thinking in my mind, I really want to buy it. And I'm, think, and I'm walking. You know, after, after, a, after a, a, a time, the sales girl will say, can, can we help you? Because constant activity without words shows you need help. Yeah? You must be a speaking believer. You must learn to talk. There are things I said 20 years ago that I just lived in. You know, I was at the pastor's conference, Brakopland's pastor's conference. One of my friends inboxed me. He said, you said this thing 20 years ago. We were in school in nine, the year 1999. I looked at the believer's verse of Beatrice Magda and I told him, I said, I will go to Copeland's conference and I will use my faith for everything. That was 20 years ago. Like my brother said, I don't wear, you don't wear out in this faith. You know, some people ask me, last year, sir, I didn't achieve my goals. What do I do? You are still living. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it with this. Hey, hey, last year, all my goals were not. Hey, hey, carry them over and keep living. Don't even set new ones. There are things I've been believing God for 10 years. And someone said, when you are trusting God for something, for a long time, it doesn't come. I said, do you know how long I'm going to be here? I will outlive this problem. It will come. <laughs> you see, sometimes when you put dates to your faith, it breeds anxiety. Once the devil knows he can get you, you just put all kinds of delay. You know, one day I had this stuff in my nose and everything. I was to go and preach. I prayed, I spoke the word, nothing happened. And I said, Listen, you know what? With this kata, we will preach. But I know that I will at leave you in this body. You can stay in the nose, but I will at leave you. That was the end. Don't let the devil catch you fretting. Ah, I was trusting God. Hey, I was trusting God. By 25, I should have been married. Now it's 25 and a half. It's just half. You know what? Barack Copeland calls it the fate line. Take a biro or a chalk or a marker and draw a line and say, you know what? This issue of marriage, I'm not talking about it again. I have casted that care on God. I'm not touching it with my thought life. You draw the line and cross it and say, in the name of Jesus, it is done. And then the other guy, he's 26 years, you are not married. We started that issue. Yeah. We, we, it's done. It's a done deal. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like, I, I'm sure I'm married. Hey. I'm not sure I'm married. Hey. I'm sure. Hey. I'm not sure. Yeah. Most weddings is around rainy season. Ah, this is rainy season. There is no. When the brothers feel cold, that's when they normally want sisters. Now that they are feeling hot, ah, maybe it's next rainy season. <laughs> No, a double minded man will receive nothing, 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 nothing from the Lord. Your greatest task is to keep your mind fixed. That's spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not the devil, the devil is not your problem. Spiritual warfare is locking your mind on that thing and say, listen, the money will come, the provisions will come, the marriage will come, the baby will come. You lock your mind for he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God. 
I like my brother's testimony. The first thing God gives you as a result of your faith is peace. There will just be peace about that issue. And you know that the answer is on the way. Can you say loud amen? Yeah. Alright, are you learning something today? Yeah. Numbers 14, 28. Say to them. Ah, this is an interesting story. Some people say, we are like grasshoppers. Self-description. You know, <laughs> let me know if we'll get there. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord. Look at this. This is a very strong statement. Just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. This is sad. Do you realize something, Pastor? God had a will for them. They said something contrary to the will. God said, it is your will that will prevail. Because God won't force you. You see, God won't force you to prosper. God will not force you to live in health. God will not force you to live a righteous life. Are you following what I'm saying? God's plan for them was to get into Canaan. They said, we can't. God said, it's okay. I go with what you say. Most of us are not living God's plan for our life because we're saying things contrary to God's plan. God wants you to prosper in this country. You have started applying to go to Canada. You know people like to run. I'm sorry if you are going there. It's fine. You can go. It's not for you. But people just like to take off. They have said now they can't give immigration Trump. Right? You know, by that decree, there are some people now that we permanently be in Nigeria while their husband is in the U.S. Because their husband is a citizen. Now they cannot get citizenship. They'll be doing Skype marriage. One law, that country you are running to, the scripture says, Lot showed Sodom before God destroyed it. He saw it green, not knowing that it was ready for destruction. Let me say this loud and clear. A believer should be in the geography where God wants him. Regardless of what happens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just by feeling from everybody's running. Say, yeah, now, yeah. We have everybody going. I say, now, Canada, I was going, give me the phone, give me the phone, give me the phone. This country says, somebody will die here. And you know the way God does it. All your friends, their own, they will just approve, approve. Your own, you'll be spending money, spending money. Wisdom will tell you that the money is okay. If you have used that money to start a business, you'll be a better person. You know, I've never, de- you know, maybe it's me. I've never desired all those. I realized one thing: if the Lord does not bless you, you can't bless yourself. I lean strongly on the blessing of God. Pastor Zach, sometimes we even go to this America, and even some of our friends there. I swear, I spent ten dollars. It would be like let me spend this money. Go here, the wolf light. Go here, the I mean, leave light for us. We don't see light in Nigeria. Leave it. We'll pay the bill. Yeah. In their mind, in their mind, ah, they are trying to know his poverty. Don't be deceived by snow pictures. Somebody says snap pictures sent to you by snow. No, no. If you have money, you can travel there and snap your own snow picture and come back. It's not. Is it stay where God wants you? This is for somebody in this house. Relax. God has plan for you. Go and sell your mother's house to buy tickets. Are you normal? Now go there with all your degrees. You'll be opening gates. Meanwhile, God has destined that you'll be a business owner here that will shake. Like he said, this thing is an endurance race. We enter Christianity with too much anxiety. We want to hammer. David, though it's not your competition. Stop looking to, at those pictures. We, 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 we try, we, we almost look like, ah, by now, somebody should have hammered 30. Somebody should be, keep quiet. The truth of the matter is that for some of us, if God gives us wealth, they will not find us again. Because some sins are very expensive and we are too poor to commit them. We are too poor to commit them. Pastor, pastor, I will see you. Pastor, I will see you. You will not be again. Before we know that, I have seen you in a hotel with three women. Pumping champagne because careful we, we just think that that is life. Are you God needs to correct that mindset of what life is before he can entrust you with resources? What destroyed Solomon was nothing other than the blessing God gave him. Nothing. And his ambition to be a political leader. So 
so you will have what you say. Your mouth is directed by your heart. Your mouth is directed by your heart. Matthew 20, 12 verse, 10, verse, verse 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So, faith confessions are not just getting scriptures. And say, you know, I will, not be, I will not be poor. 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 You will not know when you start saying, I will be poor. I'm poor. I'm poor. I'm poor. Because, you know, when you repeat something constantly, you lose some syllables. That's not faith confession. Faith confession is that you put the scriptures in your heart so strong, unconsciously, you just realize that I can't be poor. You, do, you get what I'm saying? You know, a lot of people copied Bishop Boyd, but when we were in school, I can never be poor. They were there. I can never be poor. I can never. Until they say this thing is not working. No. You didn't see what he saw. That confession was not a nicely crafted confession. Let me show you something. My dad is a pastor. I was sharing with Pastor Zach. And when I got into ministry, my, my brother is here. With, I, we didn't get into ministry in a very... In fact, my dad didn't want me to go into full-time. I, I, I've been full-time since I left the university. And uh, my dad wanted me to work. But I knew I was called into going into full-time ministry. And when I was to get married... <laughs> you know, when, you know, sometimes when I teach it, people say, I didn't you the word of faith movement. What, what is word of faith movement? I'm here today because of it. I'm not, listen, I'm not teaching you a message I copied from someone. If I share my story with you, you'll be amazed. I plan to go and marry my wife, Pastor Zach. I had only 500 naira in my pocket. 500. <laughs> All my strategic planning, that was what he produced. <laughs> I don't remember, I told her, this in, in this new home we're about to start. We don't beg. And we don't make people feel sorry for us because we're in ministry. You know I just call say, you know, we trust God, things are tough, but we're believing God. No, no, we don't do that. We don't, we don't do that. I said, write everything we need for this marriage. Write it down. I said, I know that people give plastics during wedding. We will stand in agreement that in the name of Jesus, nobody will give us plastic gift. And I tell you, when we, when, after our wedding, we had to go and buy plastic. We realized that totally, totally not one, I'm sincerely, but like not one gift was plastic. And everything we wrote, we had. <laughs> you are saving for wedding, saving for wedding, saving for wedding. Five years. Relationship is going to eight years. How long does marriage last? Is it two of you? Eh? It's lack of faith that is your problem. Lack of faith and unhealthy expectation. You have changed and get, where did they put engagement ring? Is it this one or this one now? You have changed engagement ring from here to here to here. You are now wearing an engagement ring here. All the fingers are finished. You are still waiting. Is it throw that in away and go and look for look for something to do? Uh, it's because he doesn't have now. We are prepared when he has. What about if he gets a job and is dropped after marriage? How do you survive? Is it people don't understand this thing about faith? This thing about faith is that, like he said, nothing in this world is certain. Not even the company where that man is working. Nothing. And that's why we're having problems in our marriages. Because we enter that marriage with the fact that the guy is working in this company. He has this car. And then something happens. We don't know how to survive the terrain of tough times. When God asked us to leave Warrior and go to Bonnie Island to plant the church, I went there with 5,000 air, two pairs of trousers and one shirt. Seven years later, we built a 200 seat auditorium, a building facilities. No fundraising, just trusting God. That's why you can't walk away from where you are right now because you didn't get used faith to get there. So God can ask you for anything. You know, you know how all over the world, hey, tight it. Should we tight? If people ask me now, should we tight or should we not tight? I say, don't tight. You go, well, I'm making it look like 10% of your, 10% of your income can't do nothing for the kingdom. Absolutely nothing. Is tight Old Testament or is New Testament? Anyone you choose. I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and try to defend why you should give ten thousand naira to God. Are you joking? I'm on television every day. You know how much that costs? 
Because somebody somewhere sees the need to give to the gospel. Uh, should I tie my gross or my net? Do your basket. You know, when people start asking those questions, you know where their heart is. The alabaster, the, the woman with the alabaster box, why didn't she ask God, should I serve a cup of perfume? Or I she broke it. Why? Because it was coming from some. You see, all our giving, including tithing, including seeding, should be out of a heart of appreciation. And like, God, this is not even enough. I just want to give. And you discover something. The more you do that, the more God trusts you with resources. Are you still here? <laughs> Glory to God. So, so your mouth is directed by your heart. So if you want your mouth to say the right things, leave your mouth. Just put words in your heart. It will come out. It will come out. You know, somehow, it's difficult to convince me that I'll be broke. It's tough. And sincerely, I don't go about looking for money. Last time I preached in the U.S., the man sent me a mail. Say, how much do you charge for ministry? I said, no, I don't charge. He said, oh, a lot of people who come from your part of the world charge. I said, I'm not from that part of the world. My skin is black, but I'm from another world. We don't charge. He was amazed. He was amazed. <laughs> what, what, where is your faith? Your job? Your husband? Your, where, where's your faith? I see why people don't serve God. Sir, we're just trying to put one or two things together. Sir, I'm just trying to hustle some things. Sir, we're just trying to... We're just trying to say, what are you putting together? What can you put together? You have been in Lagos 10 years. You are still squatting. You are putting things together. If you can't put something together in 10 years, is it not proof that the next 10 years you won't be able to put it together? At least it takes 10 years to master any subject. <laughs> if you have put 10 years in putting things together and you have not been able to put it together it means you can't put you, you can't put it together you are not alpha and omega relax you are not in bible study you are not in sunday service and you are putting things together one wisdom from god will sort you out one wisdom god will just say do it this way go here he says i am the lord that god that teacher thee to profit look at laban Instead of people getting promotion, Jacob was getting demotion. So for 10 times, his wages was reduced. But God gave him one idea. And he stripped the wealth. You know, we say these things and they are very nice. But we are not patient for them. When we're, as we are building, at a point, it looked like my heart was going towards a lot of people in the church. And God had to correct me in the place of prayer. Say, so when you built the church, your eyes were on me. Say, now you're on this project. Say, your eyes are too much on men. Take your eyes off them. I had to correct myself. And you know what, Pastor Zach? In one month, all the finances we needed to get the project done came in. The question is, what was holding those finances? It wasn't people. It was where my eyes were. He says, because when you look to man, he says, when good comes, you will not see it. That means that looking to man prevents you from seeing good. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805. 888-7575 or send us an email office at Pastor Max NG. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng God bless you.